Math 142, we're going to take a peek at section 6.1, and we're just going to talk about the graphs of sine and cosine. So as we think about those graphs, let's look at that unit circle, and uh, that'll help us think about the shapes of these graphs. So um, if I think about just the equation y equals sine x, and we'll run it. Um, I'm going to grab kind of these major pieces, 0, pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2 to start with. So 0 is here. Let's put pi over 2 here. And these should be even uh, intervals, pi, 3 pi over 2, and we'll get out to 2 pi. And now I notice the extremes. Uh, the highest it gets is 1. The lowest it gets is negative 1 in both uh, height and width. So negative one uh, would be down here <laughs> and positive one is up here to get that straight. All right, so let's think about sine. So sine of zero degrees, sine is the y value. So sine starts at zero, it starts with a zero height. So we know it's gonna happen here. And then notice as this goes to 30, 45, or pi over 6, pi over 4, uh, pi over 3, it's increasing until it maxes out at 1. So up here, when x is pi over 2, that output is going to be 1. And then it starts to come back down to 0 at pi, comes out down to negative 1 at 3 pi over 2, then it gets up to 2. And now these values, um, 1 half to root 2 over 2, these aren't linear. It, it's not jagged, it's smooth. So it's increasing, it starts to slow down, turns there, coming back down, starts to curve upward like that, keeps coming around. And then it keeps going, right? Like we can keep going around the circle. So this doesn't stop here. If we kept going and we went like, you know, 360 degree, uh, 390 degrees and just kept going, it's going to keep doing this cycle forever. So this is just a little peak of what it looks like, a sign looks like. It goes from there to there. A couple things I want you to notice about it. Um, it has this amplitude of one, right? From its midline, this is the midline right here because it's the middle uh, line of it. It goes a distance of one in both directions. So this is the this is the amplitude uh, here. It also repeats itself every two pi, which makes sense. Every full circle, it starts to repeat itself. So from here to here, it starts over. It's like I could take a little stamp of this and go stamp and put it here and do the next wave. Stamp, do the next wave. And if I go from uh, pi over two out to the next peak, that distance is also going to be two pi. Um, it, that 2 pi is the amount of time it takes for it to repeat itself, so it is called the period. So that's what sine looks like. It goes through 0, 0, starts in the middle, starts on the midline, and starts when x is 0. And then it makes this wave like this. So let's look at cosine. Let's look at what uh, cosine would look like. Well, cosine at zero degrees, it's at its maximum width. Remember, cosine's with those x values. So it's up here at one. And those values are decreasing till we get up to pi over two, where it's zero. And then they, whoops, I'm looking at x values. They keep decreasing to negative one, come back up to zero, up to negative one, and keeps going from there. And that, looks like this. These graphs look a lot alike. One's just a shifted version of the other, which hopefully makes sense because we've talked about how they're 90. If you add those values together, they're 90 apart. If you subtract 90 from one of them, you get the other. Shifts back. Same idea. Still has a period of 2 pi. Still has an amplitude of 1. The only difference is that it starts at maximum width because it starts out here at 1. Hopefully that makes sense. Both these graphs go on and on forever. I'm just showing a little section of the graph from 0 out to 2 pi. It'll keep, as we go around the circle, it'll just repeat the cycle. These are periodic functions. 
Um, one thing I would like to say about them both is uh, their domain. The domain is all the possible inputs. You can input anything you want, any angle, any value you can put in here. So the domain is negative infinity to infinity. The range is the outputs. And on, on these ones, well, it only goes from negative one to one. And this notation is a set notation. The range, the outputs, the y values go from negative one inclusive to one. So when I write this, it's the same as writing negative one is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal. So those are our parent functions. Things to know. Cosine is width, it starts up at one. Sine is height, it starts at zero, right? Zero degrees. And um, goes from negative one to one, and it takes two pi to repeat itself. Great, so now what I wanna do is I wanna take these functions and start uh, messing with them a little bit. <laughs> and by that, I mean just doing some stuff to the equation and see what happens. So let's play a little bit with, uh, with Desmos. And there it is. And I'm gonna type just sine into this. So y equals sine of x. And you can see, I'll zoom out a little bit. It starts at zero like it should. It's going from positive one to negative one, and it makes that shape. Now, all these y values are outputs, right? Y is about the height. So no, notice what happens here if I say, if I add two to it on the outside. Notice what it does is it makes the midline, the midline was at zero. Here is that parent function, right? Here's y equals sine x. If I add two to it, it shifts everything up too. Similarly, if I just subtract one, it shifts everything down one. So this out here changes where that midline is at. So that gives me my, my midline, it shifts it up and down. So if I needed to just sketch a graph of sine x plus seven, well, the thing I know about it is now it's midline is gonna be at seven. It's gonna go up to eight and down to six, and it's still gonna have those same uh, those same values for the where it hits stuff, right? So like zero pi over two, three pi over two. I'm sorry, pi two pi. Of course, there'll be since we're way up high at seven six, the the x axis will be way down here, you know, further down. But since it's sine, we know sine is about height. It starts at a the middle height, and if I needed to sketch that graph basically looks like this. So this point would be the point zero seven. This point would be the point pi over two, eight, and so on. And this does it to cosine as well. So I'm gonna say either if I'm using cosine or sine, that, that if I add something outside of the function, it's gonna move it up and down. And it really determines where the midline is at. Okay, let's play with Desmos a little bit more. Now, instead of adding something outside, I'm gonna multiply by something out here. So this, uh, they're the same, they're in the same spot right now. So notice I still have that, that red line, that's my parent graph. So how about if I say, multiply this thing by three? Notice what it does, it changes that amplitude, right? It, it All the outputs, both of these things I've done are outside of the function. So they affect the y, the y values. So what I've done is I've changed the amplitude I've changed it so that it um, is multiplied by three. It still goes through zero, zero times three is zero, but instead of going through one, it now goes by three. Everything's three times further away from the midline than it was. So that gives me another thing to keep track of. If I have a, a value here that we'll call A, that's our amplitude. That's a stretch in the vertical direction. Um, if this was a sound wave, that amplitude would be volume. So even if I take this original graph that I just said, sine x plus 7, and let's say I just multiply it by 2, all that does is that changes this distance to 2. So instead of going 7 to 8, it would go 7 to 9 and down 2 to 5. This point would be up at, at 9 instead of 5. So I have two things. And again, it does it to cosine as well. Right, if I switch both of these to cosine, it does the same thing. 
stretches it by a factor of three. So I have things that affect the outputs, um, how far it goes from the midline and where the midline's at. Now, what happens when I start messing around on the inside of this thing? Okay, it's gonna start to get pretty interesting, I think. So first off, let's just add or subtract something in here. So for example, we've got this y equals cosine x. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say uh, minus pi over four. So I'm gonna subtract pi over four from it. Notice what's happened. It's been shifted to the right pi over four. So this point that was at zero one is now at pi over four one. And this is what translations do. When, you, when you're adding or subtracting inside the, um, the function, it shifts it. It feels a little counterintuitive. It's minus pi over 4, but it moved it to the right. That's because it's like saying, what value should I, would I plug into this that would make me go cosine of 0, right? Pi over 4. You're making a 0 in here. That's where it's getting shifted. So it's, this is infinitely long, right? It goes on forever and ever. So I'm using loose language when I say, instead of starting at 0, 1, it's starting at pi over 4, 1. It's not really starting there, right, because it goes on forever, but it's been shifted over to there. So if I add or subtract inside there, it's been shifted by that much. So let's say x here, and I'm going to say minus, um, let's call it c. That's called the phase shift. And uh, if you ever messed around with uh, an electric guitar, played around with pedals, there's a pedal that's called the phase shift. What a phase shifter does is it, it keeps your original sound, but it also shifts another version of the wave a little bit later, and it makes it a little bit richer, and it starts to kind of like feel a little wavy, and, and uh, it's kind of flangy, I guess you could call it as well. Um, so a phase shift moves it this much uh, in the vertical direction. As as these ones. All right, we've got one more thing to deal with, and that's this B value. This B value is a tricky one. This is multiplying X before it gets taken by cosine or sine. So I think I'll go back to sine just to use both of them. All right, and here's what sine looks like. Now, notice what's going on with sine, right? What we're doing is we're plugging values, we're plugging angles in. Those x values are taking on angles. And it's spitting out the height of those. So when it's uh, x is 0, we get a certain height. When x is pi over 6, we get a certain height. Now, if I say multiply this by 2, notice what just happened. It's making it happen twice as fast. Right, like x is x would be changing at a certain rate, but if I take sine of 2x, I'm getting like twice the x. So then the amount of time that x goes from 0 to 2 pi, right, x goes from 0 to 2 pi, 2x gets out to 4 pi. It does it twice, right? It does the cycle twice. So this is like a speed. We're making it happen twice as fast. If this was a sound wave, that would be pitch. This would be an octave higher. Um, you know, and I can make it happen three times. Notice it's repeated itself three times in that two pi cycle. Or if I make it a half, it only gets a halfway through on that two pi cycle. It takes four pi for this to make a full cycle. So this multiplier kind of controls the speed at which things are, are, are going on. And so what we can say about this is this B affects the period. Our, our period, how long it takes for it to, um, to repeat itself, is 2 pi divided by whatever that b value is. Again, like if that's, if that's 2, if that b is a 2, notice on this black one, our period, the amount of time it takes repeats itself, is pi, right? 2 pi divided by 2. If uh, we make this a 4, 2 pi divided by 4 repeats itself in pi over 2. So that b is the speed at which is how many cycles this new one will get through in a 2 pi period. This one will get through four cycles in a 2 pi period. 
So now we have all these pieces. So what we should be able to do um, is talk about identifying what's going on. Where's the midline? Uh, what's the period? What's the phase shift? And uh, one thing I do want you to take note of is the way that I wrote this. Oh, I should have added one more set of parentheses. It's a little inaccurate. I've... So notice in here, the B is factored out if there's a phase shift to identify exactly what the phase shift is. So for example, if I had something like that. So if cosine, we know that cosine, cosine's width starts at an extreme. So the parent of cosine, we know what it looks like. Looks like that and keeps going. And so let's take a look at this, what's going on with it. So first off, there's nothing added out here. There's no plus anything. So we can tell that our midline is at zero. We know this, it's been stretched by five, so its amplitude is five. So that means this will be at zero. This will be a distance of five. So far, so good. Now let's look in here. This is not in that form. B, X minus C, we need to factor this out of here. So if I factor this out of here, I would rewrite this as five cosine. Pi over three is gonna get factored out, leaving me an X minus one. Great, so now notice my B value is pi over three. So if I'm gonna to go to find that period, let's see the period is two pi divided by whatever that B value is pi over three. Okay, when I divide by a fraction, multiply by its reciprocal. So that divides out, right? Because that's like two pi over one. So my period is six. So it repeats itself every six. Also, I know that it's had a phase shift one. So this point that it was at zero is gonna get shifted over to one. And then it should repeat itself since it's period is six, it should repeat itself out to seven. Let me graph this and see, see, if, uh, see if that's what happens. So it was five cosine pi over three x minus pi over three. Oh, that's horrible. Pi over three x minus pi over three. Midline's at zero. Yeah, I'm gonna change my Step, I'm going to make this go by ones so it's easier for me to see. Yeah, midline's at zero. It goes up and down five. Midline's at zero plus zero. There's a five out here, up and down five. Yep, max is out at five. I've got this pi over three. So I said my period is six. So here is, oh, there's my one shifted over one, right? Because cosine would have started up at the, the extreme at five. And the next time it hits that peak again is out here at seven. So its period is six. So there it is, I've got, I've got all the pieces for that. Let's do another one. Turn the graph off, just type it in here and see if we can think about the pieces that this would have. And while I'm fiddling around with this, take a look at this, see if you can tell where the midline's gonna be, what the period would be, uh, what the phase shift is, and uh, what's the other thing? Oh, and what the amplitude would be. All right, I hope you got it. So it looks to me like the midline's gonna be at one. Midline's at one. Amplitude is three, so it, from one it'll go up to four. Yep, and down to negative two. Yep, that distance is three. And then uh, no phase shift, so it goes through the midline, because it's sine. And then uh, two x, so let me think about that. Two pi divided by two is pi. It should repeat itself at pi, and it sure does. At pi, it's back at one. It's hard to me to get it on there exactly. But you can hopefully see, that's pretty close. <laughs> that's hopefully good enough for you. All right, so you should be able to think about what each of those pieces uh, do and how we could sketch graphs for all of them. Um, Let's go the other route real quick. I'm gonna show a graph and we'll try and write a rule. Well, here's the graph I wanna to try to rule. For. Take a little snip of it. 
and then I can write on it and we'll see what we can we can get here. All right, well, it looks to me like that midline is at two, or negative two, okay? It looks to me like the amplitude, this is at negative two. This looks like it gets up to one. Yeah, that's a distance of one. So it looks like its amplitude is three. Um, I see a peak here and a peak here out at seven, so negative one to seven. To me, this looks like it's probably, since it's starting an extreme, I could write it as a cosine. So I'm gonna think it's probably cosine of something. Now I could write it as sine as well, right? If I wrote it from here. And we might do that and just see if it works. But let's go with cosine to start with. So amplitude of three, so it's been stretched by three. It's shifted down two, got that part. Um, it's back here, this, this should start if it didn't have any phase shift, it would start at zero, but it's back at negative one. So I think there's going to be a plus one in here. And then the last part is just going to be like, what's that multiplier? Well, let's see. My period, it goes from negative one to seven. My period is eight. So my period is eight. So this is interesting. I know that uh, the period is two pi divided by that B value. What's kind of cool though is multiply both sides by b, b p equals two pi. Divide both sides by p. That means the b value is also two pi divided by the other thing, right? Two pi divided by the period gives me b. So if I go two pi divided by that period, that's pi over four. So my b value must be pi. So there's one version of it. If I wanted to write it as sine, right? I'm like, oh, here it is. I'm going to start here in the middle going down, so let me think about this sign. It has the same period. It has the same midline. It's been stretched by three as well, but sine usually goes up. This is going down, so it's multiplied by a negative number. And then it looks like it's been shifted over to positive one, because sine would usually go through when x is zero. So I'm gonna say x minus one. And that will give me the same one. I could write it from here, right from five. It still has a stretch of three, pi over four. It's still going down two. It's going up here, so I don't have to negate it. But now it was shifted over to five, so I could say x uh, minus, minus five. There's an infinite number of answers. I could have written my cosine from this point instead of plus one, plus seven. I'm going to encourage you to be like, find the ones that are closest to zero. That's, that's kind of going to be the way I think you should go. All right, so I'm, I'm hoping at this point you're feeling pretty comfortable with uh, thinking this way. You have these parent functions for sine and cosine, and they have these transformations on them. If you want to play around, you can use Desmos. And one of the things you can do is if I just go cosine of x, notice I could type some values in here. Like we've been going uh, y equals a cosine of b x uh, minus c plus d. And now it says, it says you can add sliders for all these. So if I add sliders for all these, notice if I move the d value, that's going to move the midline, right? I might change my settings a little bit. Change this to pi over two. If I change, let's see, A should stretch it up and down, right? Or smaller, a half, a six. And notice if I negate it, it makes it go the opposite direction. Uh, B should speed it up or slow it down. I can look at what my period are, my period is. And then C will shift it left and right however much you want to shift it. So if you want to set something up like this just to kind of play around um, and see what the effects are, go for it. Hey, get practice in with this graphing, and going back and forth and writing rules from the graph as well. If you have any questions, please message me, post them in the forums, and get that practice from this unit done.